Good morning. And welcome to the San Gabriel Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Now, whether you're joining us in the sanctuary or watching us from home, uh, we're glad you're with us today. My name is Woody Hibbard. My pronouns are he, him. I've been a member of the fellowship for about four years. And uh, this past year, I've been serving as your uh, vice president on the board of directors, uh, which a term that's soon to end. Congratulations, everybody that's uh, taken over this. San Gabriel is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Uh, we've been in Georgetown for 15 years. Uh, we are a people of diverse faith and a central value of love. And if you'd like to know more about us and learn about upcoming events, uh, take a look at our website, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, this morning, our minister, uh, Reverend Jamie, is introducing us to a new ritual they created for us, and it's called the book ceremony. Uh, and we're invited into a spirit similar to that of the flower ceremony that we had a few weeks back. <clears throat> more, we'll, we'll tell you more about that a little later. But in the meantime, enjoy some of these quotes from the banned books that we have uh, dispersed through our uh, uh, service today. And please know that whoever you are, wherever you're from, whomever you love, and wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. I'm Reverend Jamie. My pronouns are they and them. And I just want to extend an additional welcome to anybody who might be visiting. And if you did not bring a book, don't worry, there's extra, so don't feel like if you didn't bring a book, you cannot take one. We want to make sure that you can enjoy the ritual. Just know that. This is a little sheet in the back that has all of our announcements. As usual, we're very busy. I do want to call your attention to the congregational meeting. It's super important, so please hang around after the service to vote. And we'll be voting on the budget and the new slate of uh, our new board. So. It's an exciting day for us, and there's much more going on. Among the list of books returned, ordered to return back to the shelves, was a book called They Call Themselves the KKK, The Birth of an American Terrorist Group by Susan Campbell. And I quote from said book for our chalice lighting. During times of crisis or uncertainty, People often resort to rumors or stories circulated without facts to confirm the truth. To help them cope with anxieties and fears, of all the rumors, racial and hate rumors are considered the most dangerous because they are divisive and create hostility that can lead to violence. In Unitarian Universalism, we strive to do better May it be so. And may our chalice continue to illuminate our paths in search of justice. Our opening hymn is number 345, With Joy We Claim the Growing Light. Please stand as you are able. The lyrics will be projected.
right, here's another uh, excerpt from a band book. Aranutic, do you get that? Aranutic? is a word that comes from an indigenous population in Alaska. It describes a person who embodies both a male and a female spirit. And Arnutic people are considered to be very special because it means that they can see beyond a lot of the normal boundaries of the world and view things in all sorts of different ways. Two-spirit is a similar Native American term for mom. Uh, this is a book by Jazz Jenkins from the book Being Jazz, My Life as a Transgender Teen. Okay, our affirmation is an expression of our covenant with one another. Please read after me. The words will be projected. The doctrine of this church is love. The quest of truth is its sacrament. Service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace. To seek knowledge and freedom. <laughs> to seek knowledge and freedom. <laughs> to serve humanity and fellowship. To the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Thus we do covenant with one another. This is from the book called The Bluest Eyes by Toni Morrison, also a banned book. All things in her are flux and anticipation but her blackness is static and dread, and it is the blackness that accounts for, that creates the vacuum edge with, distant, with distaste and white eyes. Now we will continue with our shared knowledge of banned books adventures via our Wonderbox moment. Karina. Are there any people in the back who want to come close so they can see what I have here? This is our wonder box. And we like to make guesses so everybody can hear each other's thoughts and wondering about what might be in here. Does anybody want to make a guess as to what might be in the wonder box today? A banned book. Any other guesses? It is pretty heavy. Classified material. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have such things in my shower and bathroom. <laughs> Just soap. <laughs> Any other guesses? It sounds kind of heavy. You know, people often ask, guess if there's a book in here or not, and I've no, I don't know if I've ever had a book in here. These are not banned books, but these are some of my favorites. This is one by Reverend Joe Soto, Teresa Soto, and um, I use it a lot. It's called Spilling the Light, book of poetry. Use those for chalice lightings. Alligators All Around, this is a Marie Sendak book. People who know I'm from Holland, this was a favorite as a kid, the cow who fell in the canal. And these are also, of course, I had no problem finding books small enough. And this one is Sunday and Every Day, my little book of Unitarian Universalism. And it has some fun things to do in there for families. All right, we'll see what our story is about books today. And if you look closely at the illustrations, you'll see something interesting with the with the pictures are made from words. A lot of them are made from words. A Child of Books, written and illustrated by Oliver Jeffers and Sam Winston. Published by Candlewick Press. 
I am a child of books. I come from a world of stories. And upon my imagination, I float. I have sailed across a sea of words to ask if you will come away with me. Some people have forgotten where I live. But along these words, I can show you the way. We will travel over mountains of make-believe, discover treasure in the darkness. We can lose ourselves in forests of fairy tales and escape monsters in haunted castles. We will sleep in clouds of song and shout as loud as we like in space. For this is our world we've made from stories. Our house is a home of invention where anyone at all can come for imagination is free. The end. So yeah, in an era of increased book banning, we think about how taking away information and imagination is particularly problematic and awful for children who need access to all the things that they can learn about. And we have some paper in the back if we want to write up our own stories and make up our own books if we'd like to. All right, I look forward to seeing what people trade today. I thought of this idea about the book banning because I wanted to have a practical way to basically say we don't agree. We don't agree with being told what we can and cannot read, erasing history, erasing all the things that we know that hurt other people, like transphobia and racism. And so, as it often is in the world of, this is your idea, go do it, <laughs> I now have to, I told a couple of colleagues about this to kind of workshop it out, and then they told a couple of colleagues, and now I've been asked by the UUA to create the service for the worship web. <laughs> no pressure. So I just want to thank you for the, the, the creativity to do this this morning and uh, be the, the first to do it and be a guinea pig, quite honestly. Our second hymn is Love Will Guide Us. Please rise as you are able. The lyrics will be projected.
Another quote from a banned book is, the book is called The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chabosky. It's hard to see a friend hurt this much, especially when you can't do anything except be there. I just want to make him stop hurting, but I can't. So I just follow him around whenever he wants to show me his world. Likewise, we know that in joys and sorrows in life, we can't stop the hurting of our friends and our community. But just like Charlie in the book, we can be here with one another and for one another through the pain and the celebrations. We need both to remember our humanity and what it means to be in community. I will walk around with the mic for joys and sorrows. Please signal me if you have a joy or sorrow to share. And Woody will drop a little pebble into our bowl. All the way in the back, okay. There's a fight over who's going first. I have a joy to share. Last week I was not here in church. I was in Galveston celebrating the graduation of my granddaughter from medical school. So we have a doctor in our family now. I'm Ron Kirish. And a concern is for Jay McMillan, who's a member. Uh, he's had surgery last week. He's doing better, still in the hospital, and it's looking like he's got a couple of weeks of uh, in-hospital rehab, and then he'll be back into Sun City. A particular joy, yesterday uh, there was a group in Sun City that uh, held a meeting. The speaker topic was a support group for the LGBTQ community. The room was packed uh, with supporters. So it's uh, just joyful to know that uh, in Texas, uh, in Sun City, uh, there's a diverse group. Anybody else? I'm Phil Hewitt. This week I will be a great-grandfather again. Um, my middle grandson in uh, Burnett and his wife are having a daughter whose name is Alicia. So um, this is the first of two great-grandchildren this year. Going to be busy. Karina. I would like to just hold a moment of silence for Akira Ross and her family. Akira was shot in Cedar Park for being who she was by a stranger at a gas station. Thank you. I have a joy. Um, I do want to say that for this ritual, all kinds of reading are perfectly OK, whether you need big print, whether you need Braille. My son has dyslexia. He's 10. And we have discovered that audiobooks are working for him. And he is now gifted in his vocabulary. And he will be in the gifted program because of what audiobooks did. Anybody else? I'm coming to you. I am. I need it. Um, my joy is that during this month, I have been surprised by several corporates, corporations and businesses which are supporting the OBGT community. And um, I will actually eat at Cracker Barrel because they fought back against the 
disrespect that they receive for saying that they are open to everyone. Any other joys or sorrows? Whether your joy was spoken or it's unspoken and your sorrow is spoken or unspoken, we hear you. Let us have a deep breath. For all that remains unspoken, may the caring of the community offer a space of deep kindness and care. We will now have the offering. There is more than one kind of freedom, said Aunt Lydia. Freedom to and freedom from. In the days of anarchy, it was freedom to. Now you are being given freedom from. Don't underrate it. That is from Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. Okay, we take an offering each week to sustain this space that we call home and to support the work of our fellowship. Uh, please give generously as you're able. The offertory music is Look to the Rainbow from the musical Finian's Rainbow. The offering will now be gratefully received, and we thank you. We close our sacred time together when we extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the chalice inside of our hearts, which serves as a beacon of hope. Emboldened by its blaze, we are reminded that our strength as prophetic and powerful people is found when we come together at San Gabriel, which is here in Georgetown to stay, no matter what may come our way. 
There are worse crimes than burning books. One of them is not reading them at all. That's a quote from Joseph Brodsky. So now it's time for the book ceremony. If you would like to get up from your seats and have a break before the congregational meeting, and if you are not a voting member, you feel free to stay, but this is also your cue to exit if you would like. Um, the books are in the back, and you can peruse. I think we have a few minutes before our congregational meeting starts, so if you don't find the book that you're looking for, or you haven't found one, or you want to think about it, you'll have time after the congregational meeting to go back to the back where the books are on the tables. And by the way, we have overflowed into two tables now. So good job, San Gabriel. Thank you. 